Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's topic is your fear of change is your biggest block. This video, this topic, it goes deep. There's a lot of levels to it and I realized as I was sorting my thoughts out uh, and writing as I always do, that it's really about fear, but I wanted to address fear of change specifically. So you have a grand vision for your life. You want better for your life. You wanna make more money. You want to have your own business and have that be a purposeful, fulfilling business that positively impacts a lot of people. You wanna have better relationships with your friends and family. You wanna have more adventure in your life, be able to travel and go see things. You want to have a dream partner in your life. You want all of these things. You want this much better life for yourself and you should. And you're capable and you're worthy of having that. So what is it that's stopping you from moving forward? What is it that is holding you back from really manifesting, attracting, developing yourself into someone who lives that life? For me and what I've realized through people that I've also worked with, it's fear of change. It's fear in general. And again, I'll make a video on that alone but it's really fear of change. All that stuff you want in your life, all of you having a better body and being in great shape, you have to change how you eat. You have to change your sleeping patterns. You have to change your energy. You have to change uh, your schedule. You want a business. You may not know how to grow that business. You're going to have to learn and change and grow to have that business. You're going to have to change your belief and confidence in yourself to have that level of responsibility to make that amount of money and impact that amount of people that you want. It all requires change. And it's not an external change, it's a change within you. You have to change. One of the quotes, I didn't write this down, but that's popping into my head is from Dr. Wayne Dyer, if you're not familiar with his work. Oh man, the late great Dr. Wayne Dyer, rest in peace. One of the beautiful teachers has really impacted my life. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So changing the way you look at things, it all is internal, guys. It's all internal. You have to change the way that you think. You have to change the way that you maybe speak or act. You have to change the way that you view relationships and people. You have to change the way that you go about things change the fear of it it comes from our subconscious beliefs and this stuff goes back to honestly the beginning of time like cro magnon you know human beings in a caveman level and i'm serious and i'll explain to you right now what i mean by that we are you've heard the saying creatures of habit we're creatures of habit and we're creatures of comfort those are very true and those habits and ways that we go about things day to day, they serve us very well until they don't. Meaning, in order to get in shape, you've got to create a habit and be a creature of habit and go to the gym and eat the specific way and you know drink your water and get enough sleep. You've got to have some good habits in place. When it becomes a detriment to, to us is when we want to change and we're stuck in this cycle of comfort and we're unwilling to change certain things in order to better us and move us towards our vision. We are literally wired to do the same thing, to stay in the familiar and the known because change can be dangerous or at least it used to be a lot more dangerous. And again, go back to my caveman example. If you think about it like this, Imagine we're all cave men and cave women and we're rolling around in the tribe, right? And we found a place where we can get water from. And so we're all drinking out of this, uh, you know, water source and that water source is getting low and we're like, crap, man, we got to change something. We're getting low on water. Okay. Fred said he'd volunteer. Fred's going to go find water for us. And Fred goes to a different watering hole and says, guys, I found some new water and he drinks out of that watering hole and he comes back and Fred ends up getting sick and dying. That subconscious belief, that programming from the time we've existed on this planet, everyone's thinking, oh my God, that changed that different, man, we don't wanna do that. Fred drank that water and he died. 
oh my God, change is different. We got to stick to what we know. We got to, this is the watering hole. We're not going to go anywhere. What are we going to do? It's fear of change. And this goes deep again, you know, fear of people, right? These like warring tribes throughout all of history as we've developed as a species, warring tribes, right? What comes to mind is like Native American tribes, right? And uh, the introduction to Western culture to the Native Americans. And man, I'm, all kinds of downloads come there. I won't even get into all that stuff. But it's like that fear of change. We can't be friends with this other tribe because Bob said meeting these uh, this other tribe might be good. Maybe we could help each other out. And Bob tried to go say hi and they freaking killed him and ate him. Crazy, silly example, but I'm serious. So the fear of change, the fear of other people, the fear of the unknown is really what it's about. So the fear of the unknown and the fear of change go hand in hand. We're scared of change because we're scared of the unknown because we don't know what that unknown is gonna bring. The caveman water example, the going and meeting other tribes. You get hurt for that, it's dangerous. We gotta stick to what we know because the unknown can be dangerous. So that used to serve us way back when, but now it holds us back in our society because we simply don't have to worry about a lot of the things we have had to worry about in the past or history, right? This is where obviously science, technology, developments uh, in day-to-day -day life come in <clears throat> now your vision here's the, here's the crazy thing so the fear of change comes from your ego your ego is designed to keep you safe and comfortable it's it, and it honestly it wants what's best for you you've got a good thing going you've got your bills paid you're you know you've got food and water you can provide and support and so your ego actually wants to protect you it wants what's best for you but even though here you are in this situation where you've got, you know, a situation in which you're comfortable with, you could take care of yourself and whatever, you're deeply unfulfilled and you know that there's a higher calling for you and you hate your job and you're questioning all your relationships, you feel the need to change and grow. That's how we're designed as human beings. That's what our soul's about. That is your higher self. So you've got this ego down here that wants to keep you sane and in the familiar to protect you from the unknown because that's its job. That's what we do, drink the same water hole. Don't go and talk to those people over there. You might get hurt. That's your ego. That's fear. But your higher self is like, man, I'm super unfulfilled. You got to change something. You know you're not happy down here. You got to grow. You got to expand. That's consciousness. That's your higher self. That's the universe. Expansion, growth. Here's the crazy thing about it. And I've got to give a shout out to one of my uh, buddies and old mentors, Nick Comedina. You can just look him up on Instagram. Amazing guy. Divine in his divine masculine, inspirational, very awesome human being. And I remember having a phone call with him and he helped me come to this realization. You know, the crazy thing about the ego and your higher self is they both want what's best for you. Your ego actually wants what's best for you. It's trying to keep you safe. And that's what it thinks is best for you. Your higher self wants what's best for you because it knows you're capable of so much more. So how do we bridge that gap? We've got to be aware of how we're operating and so this is the tool it's self-awareness here's an example of change right it comes on a subconscious level it starts with your beliefs so the fitness example i always tend to go to fitness because if you watch my content i uh, have been a trainer or was a trainer for a long time worked with a lot of people so fitness is just a and i think it's a perfect example in a lot of these cases and these things i talk about so let's say you want to your change that you want to make in life is you want to get into great shape. You want a different body. You want to look different. You want to feel different. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You're sick of being overweight. You're sick of your knees hurting because you need to lose these pounds. You have back pain. and uh, Or maybe you just don't have that much confidence. You want to attract the opposite sex, man or woman or whatever. You want to get in shape. But every time you try to get in shape, it always fails. You always self-sabotage. You eat, you say, go, go back to your old patterns, your ego. You go back to the familiar, you know, but you always seem to get to this point where maybe you've lost a couple of pounds, but you regress. Here's why. Because you fear change and everything that comes with that because there's a belief system underneath that change that's holding you back. You have an identity as this person. So you're scared of all the negative backlash that's gonna come when you do transform and change. You're gonna you're scared of losing friends that get jealous of you because now you're looking damn good in that dress and they're like, what? That's crazy, now she's getting all the attention. Oh, we're gonna hate on her. And this goes back to the other video I made the other day about building and moving in silence and this is why it's so powerful. 
you've got to understand that change starts first in your mind and it's, it comes from changing your subconscious beliefs, okay? You are scared of changing because you're scared of what that's gonna bring. You don't know what that's gonna be like. You're scared of the unknown. Oh my God, how are people gonna respond to me when I'm sitting here and I lost all this weight and I feel amazing? Oh man, some people are gonna be jealous. Ooh, I'm gonna have to deal with all this stuff with my family. Like, oh, I don't want it. It's gonna be too much. I don't wanna deal with that change and that fear of the unknown, even though I know that's what I really want. So I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna, you know, go and get some, uh, you know, whatever crap and just stop working out, right? Regress. Because you have that fear of change, you have that fear of the unknown. But here's the thing about it, you're just stopping yourself and this is self-sabotage again because the only way that you will ever, again, go back and manifest that vision, that business, is by becoming a different person. Maybe in a literal sense when it comes to fitness, but certainly mentally, emotionally, internally, spiritually, you have to become a different person. The person that's running that multi-million dollar company is not the same person that started that business. You have to become a different person and expand your knowledge and skills and not only knowledge and skills with your business for whatever particular avenue that you've created this business, now you've got to learn to become a boss, which is a whole new skill set. And you've got to become an owner, which is a whole new skill set. So you've literally got to morph internally and go into that fear of the unknown that you might fail, you might screw up, you might lose a bunch of money, you might get betrayed, you might make the wrong partnership, your business might crash and burn. That's all fear of the unknown. That's why we fear change. And if you're someone who is always start and stop, start and stop, it's because you have that subconscious belief, that fear of change, the fear of the unknown. But indeed, going into the unknown is the only way something new and different can happen because if it's familiar, you've already done it. You're not growing, you're not expanding, you're not changing. Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about this. When people do his meditations, they get to this point and they go, oh my God, are these meditations even working? Is this like, am I even doing this right? Like, I don't even know if this is worth it. And what he says is, that's exactly where you want to be. That means you're so close to having a breakthrough because you're coming up against yourself. You're coming up against your own limit and you're right there. That's the point in where you keep going because now you're going into the unknown. And in the unknown is the only place where this new vision can happen, this new thing can happen because you don't know what it's gonna be like. You've never been there. You haven't imagined in your mind and you might think you know, but you really don't know. You have no idea what it's gonna be like. So this is a way we self-sabotage ourselves, the fear of change, the fear of the unknown. You've got to go into it. So if you're in that place where you're scared as hell, dude, feel that, sis, feel that emotion. No, yeah, embrace it. You're scared as hell. You don't know what's gonna happen. But if you just keep doing the same thing, nothing different is gonna happen. Nothing is gonna change. You're scared to go up and talk to that girl. You're scared of rejection, especially with all this crazy stuff on the internet, man. I just don't even pay attention to all this stuff. It's wild. But, um, so I, I really don't even know or want to know all the crazy crap. But anyways, uh, cause this is distraction, right? Man, I gotta make a video about distractions. So you're afraid to go talk to that girl cause you're afraid of getting blasted. You're afraid of being humiliated and rejected, but by you sitting there going and being afraid of the fear of rejection, the fear of the unknown, then it might not work out. You're just gonna stay, you know, alone and not uh, have an opportunity with a girl who actually might be really into you. You've got to take a chance on something different. You've got to go into the fear of the unknown, the fear of the change. And it is, it's painful, it's uncomfortable as hell. That vulnerability is the scariest thing I think we can face as human beings because vulnerability means you're putting yourself out there in order to be attacked and hurt. And who wants to be hurt? None of us. We're wired as human beings to run away from pain and towards pleasure. So of course, that vulnerability, that's what it takes. The fear of the unknown. Oh my God, I'm in territory that I've never been in. I am scared as hell because I don't know what to expect. Yeah, it might hurt. It might hurt real bad, but it might not. And it might be something amazing. You won't know. And so you've got to get over the fear of the unknown. You've got to get over the fear of change and understand that this is the process. So, man, okay, I kind of got, I didn't get off tangent there. So one of the things uh, that popped up in my mind, uh, I read this book actually by another one of my mentors when I was uh, pursuing some like uh, fitness stuff. 
uh, and he recommended a book to me. The book is called Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. So Psycho, Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. And here's what Max, the, you know, Cliff Notes version or, you know, of, of that story of his book. Maxwell Maltz was a plastic surgeon. He was a plastic cosmetic surgeon. And he wrote a book about psychology, right? So what is this book about? As a plastic surgeon, what he noticed was this. He would have two men come in who had zero confidence, who had, you know, this idea about who they were because they had these like horrific scars on their faces, right? And what he noticed is, what he noticed was he would do surgery on one guy and repair his scar and this literally overnight, this man's uh, demeanor, identity, everything, who he was, his energy changed. And he became this super confident, you know, person because now all of a sudden that limiting scar, he thought that scar was the source of all his, all his pain, you know, holding him small. Then he would do the same surgery on another guy with a similar scar and he would look just as good, if not better and be become, you know, this handsome person he had in his mind, just like the other guy, but he didn't change at all. And so he, he went in and he's like, well, why is that? And so what the book talks about psycho cybernetics is that you have to create the identity. You literally have to become a different person and form a different identity of who you are or who you want to be and gradually change into that or else you're going to sabotage yourself and go back to your old ways because unless on a subconscious level, that belief and that identity about who you are changes, you will not change and you will self-sabotage. So if you have this idea in your mind of the chubby girl who has bad genetics and can never get in shape, no matter how much you work out or diet, you're subconsciously always gonna sabotage yourself and you're probably not gonna have many results. I can relate to this again as an example as a trainer because I've worked with a lot of people and what I noticed was when I worked with them on their mind about who they want to be and why they're doing this, what it's gonna feel like when they are that person, what are the things that they're gonna get to do? What's the self image they have? I swear to God, the people that didn't have any weight loss for like six, seven months working, once it clicked in their mind, I swear to God, the weight melted off almost overnight. They became this different person. Over and over and over, I saw this. So it's about one, forming a new identity in our minds. How do we think of ourselves? How do we view ourselves? irregardless of the perceptions and opinions of other people. And that's a whole nother topic and, and thing. You've got to, as Dr. Wayne Dyer says, become independent of the good opinions of other people. You've got to form a new identity of who you want to be as you are living that vision at the end. Who is that guy? Who is that girl? It ain't the same guy or girl that's watching this video. You might be on your way but you gotta change, you gotta do stuff, you gotta become a different person, you gotta operate and move differently in order to be that person that manifests that vision. And you've got to get over the fear of change and the fear of the unknown in order to do that and understand that that might be one of the big blocks preventing you from forming that new identity because you're scared of what it's gonna look like. You're scared of the extra responsibility when you're running a multi-million dollar company. You're scared of all the attention you're gonna get from all the guys when you're super fit. You don't wanna be taken advantage of. It's happened in the past. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Our, our minds, this is all, it's mind, body, and soul. That's why I, I put the thing on my banner and I gotta get a new one made, but anyways, it's all connected. Mind, body, spirit. It comes deep in our subconscious, in our minds, in our emotions, in our spirits, and it manifests itself on the physical plane. So one of the uh, things I wrote out that I invite you to do is it's an exercise for you to do that may really shed some light on your own psyche, your own identity. So pick a goal that you have in mind. We'll stick with fitness. We'll stick with fitness, man or woman. You wanna get in shape, you wanna have a six pack, you wanna get some some uh, you know thick legs and a nice firm booty, you wanna tone up your arms, you wanna see that midsection. Say it's a fitness goal, but pick any goal. It could be around money, uh, your business, whatever's blocking you right now. Pick a goal. Write that goal at the top of a piece of paper and then write out three sections. So you got two lines, one, two, three, uh, going vertical. So the goal is at the top. On the left section, you're gonna write out what are my current beliefs about this goal? My, my beliefs about getting in shape. My goal is to get a six pack and you know, to do I need to lose 25 pounds. 
you got to be honest with yourself. What are your beliefs about this? My beliefs are that I don't think it's possible for me. My beliefs are that I've always been out of shape and that it doesn't matter what I look like. Girls aren't going to like me. My beliefs are that I don't, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I have the discipline. My beliefs are, you know, whatever it is, right? You write out all those negative beliefs on the left side or the left side, I guess for you guys on the middle section, you can, you can write that. I think it would, for some reason, my gut, my soul was telling me to have you guys do this too, or I, you know, I do this too. In the middle section, where did that belief come from? Because it's probably not yours. It was probably your parents or your sister, your brother, aunt, uncle, or a teacher, or maybe media. Well, yeah, I don't think I can get in shape because my dad always told me I was a fat, a little fat kid and I was always gonna be a fat kid. That's where that belief came from. So that belief wasn't even yours, man. So right out on the left-hand side, Here's your goal. What are my beliefs about this? In the middle, you write, where did that belief come from? Now, here's the beautiful thing. Once you identify the belief and where it comes from, you go, dang, that wasn't even mine, man. Programming, subconscious level, into your mind, into your body, into your being, your cells, literally. On the last section on the right, you're gonna write a new belief that's positive. So here's an example. Uh, my belief about getting a six pack is that I don't think I can do this. I, that I'm always going to be, my belief is that I'm always going to be fat. Where did that belief come from? My dad always telling me I'm a fat, I'm a fat kid to stop eating. Probably more common with women, unfortunately. But anyways, so my, my dad always told me I was going to be fat. Okay. Now what's the new belief? The new belief is I understand that my belief about being out of shape does not come from me. My new belief is I know that I have what it takes to get in shape and I know that it's going to take a lot of hard work, but I know that I can do this. So you identify that negative belief. Where did it come from? And then you rewrite a positive belief. My belief is that money is hard to get. I'm always going to be broke. Where did that belief come from? My mom, we lived on food stamps. She always said, man, we're going to be poor. I don't know how to get out of this. That ain't even your belief. My due belief is I have everything it takes takes into me to break the family karmic cycle of being poor and that my mom was doing the best she could. I believe now that I'm gonna be rich and I'm gonna make it happen. Short versions, not my best articulations, but anyways, that's a judgment on myself. Anyways, you understand the exercise and this can be incredibly enlightening because when you identify those beliefs underlying your behaviors, and you start to work on a ground level, little by little, tilling the soil, choo, things start to manifest on the surface. So get to the belief structure of it. We have so many fears. The fear of change is the fear of the unknown. It's the fear that you have to address the fear of change because the fear of change might involve you leaving people behind. You have a fear of being alone. You have a fear of new people and relationships because people are dangerous. Where'd that belief come from? You have a fear of new situations because no situations ever come out or, uh, the way you want them to, but that's only because you have a belief that new situations don't ever work out for you. So how can you reprogram that belief? Man, maybe it's more about beliefs. We'll do a video on that too. You have a fear of growth because you have a fear of responsibility. This was a big one for me. Every time I, tr I started to reach these like new levels of success, I realized the way that I grew up, I didn't, I had a fear of responsibility. I had a fear of taking on responsibility because of developmental arrests that I had as a result of the traumas that I faced. So I had maturational developmental arrests in my personality and my being, which caused me to self-sabotage my success on a professional and business level and financial level because I didn't want to take on more responsibility. Stuff goes deep, guys. So how do we get over the fear of change and the fear of the unknown? Change our beliefs. That's an exercise to start doing it and look at this over and over. So every time you go in the gym, you try to get in shape or you reach that level where you're about to break through and you want to go backwards, you review this and go, this is beliefs, man, I got you. I can do this, I can do this. It's slow and steady, gradual change. Or it might not be. It might be overnight for you. Everyone's going to be different with this. It takes time. 
it might not take that much time, but you've got to understand how do we change its consistency into the point where all of a sudden you have the breakthrough and you go, shoo, I broke through. Dang, man, I've never been able to see my abs. Oh my God, my butt has never looked like this. Girls, you looking in the mirror, you're like, oh, we're doing it. You can do it, slow, gradual change. Or it might not be. You may have be one of the people that does this exercise and have a huge breakthrough and all of a sudden you land the biggest sales deal of your life tomorrow and it brings in more money than you've ever made in your life. Possibilities. Quote, uh, so, oh, last thing. How do we change it? Just being aware that of the self-sabotage. Okay, kind of went over that. So the quotes that I'll read for you today, the first one, got three of them. Men go to far greater lengths to avoid what they fear than to obtain what they desire. Dan Brown, who wrote The Da Vinci Code. Uh, next one is from Jim Rohn, personal development guy. Man, if you never listen to Jim Rohn, he is awesome. He is hilarious and he's awesome. He's since passed on, rest in peace, Jim Rohn, but he's awesome. Uh, and uh, this one has always stuck in my head. Your life does not get better by chance. Your life gets better by change. Jim Rohn. And the last one is from Rumi, uh, one of the great uh, philosophical, spiritual poets of all time. Yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I am changing myself. Rumi. Beautiful, guys. We gotta, we gotta get over the fear. The fear of the change, the fear of the unknown. We're gonna pull Archangel Oracle card of the day. Tap three times, we clear the energy and take a deep breath. We ask for the purest and most divine truth in your highest good and the highest good of collective. Oh man. One thing I'll say too before I pull this card, like this is, you know, it's interesting people's response. They're like, man, you had me until you talk about crystals and oracle cards. Man, you take what resonates with you and move on. You're resonating with my messages because part of my gift and ability is to take some of these spiritual, mental, and emotional concepts and distill them down into a message that makes sense on a practical level. But they're only gonna get weirder because I will be talking about astral projection, um, deep meditations for the subconscious, and uh, understanding the etheric body, the astral planes. Um, you know, Right now, I think Jupiter just entered Pluto, which is like one of the most auspicious times for Gemini's, which I am, and it's like a 12 year cycle. If that's not your thing, that's all good, I get it. You know, Take what resonates with you and move on. I'm talking in a practical way, but all this stuff that I'm talking about is not coming from like the 3D, like, oh, hustle grind, you know, let me you know, do this business coach. All my stuff is coming from spirit. It's, this is, I'm very, this is all very spiritual, man. When I speak, it's not me speaking, it's spirit speaking through me. Like, you know, so again, if it doesn't resonate, it's all gravy. Just leave it and move on. You know, you're you're not ready or it might not be for you and that's okay. So we ask for the purest and most divine truth in your high school. Whoa, shoot, they flying out. Okay, well, I guess that is that. Um, My high school, your high school, and the high school of the collective today we got, whoa, I dropped one here. We got the seven of Michael. I always say you look at the picture first and look at what images, what pops out in the image. Is it the boy with the backpack? Are you carrying stuff? Is it Archangel Michael? Is it the wings? Is, is it the dark path? Are you on the path of the light? Is there a decision you have to make, right? Just reflect on it because that's a message for you and then we'll read the short message. There's a better course of action available to you. Working alone may not be the best answer. Review all the details. So this is about change today. It's about fear of change, fear of the unknown. No coincidence, this guy, this boy, is has to choose a path. He doesn't know which path to choose. He's standing at the what looks like a scarier path. That is the unknown. We gotta embrace that and go into the unknown because even though it looks darker, it may have a better outcome. So you've got to trust your gut as well. This is about fear of change for the unknown. Seven of Michael today. There's a better course of action available to you. Ask yourself, what am I really trying to accomplish? Think about whether working alone on this project is a good idea. Is your unique point of view providing creative solutions or is it causing you to miss important details? Go over the details again. 
Your angels want you to be a success in this endeavor and are giving you a heads up with this card. There's probably go more going on here than meets the eye. Someone may have ulterior motives. Additional meanings of this card, the need for caution, poor timing, and running away. So what pops up for me is the poor timing, and we're talking about the fear of change, the fear of the unknown. So don't try to rush this stuff, but don't hold yourself hostage and also not get started. So be pragmatic and practical about your decisions as you move forward and make these changes, but do not allow the fear of the unknown, what may or may not be, get stuck. Because here's the thing, as you go forward and you start really embodying your purpose and your path, you you are gonna screw up, man. You might get hurt, you probably will. This is what it's about. Again, it's about being vulnerable, but it's for a reason. It's for you to learn a lesson. If you're not ready yet, the universe is gonna teach you a lesson. And don't be scared about that because it may teach you through love. It may say, see, you were worried about trust. And we brought this person to your life and that's exactly the business partner you needed. The universe always tries to teach you through love first, but unfortunately, we are not saints. I'm just a regular guy just like you. And so a lot of the time, a lot of my lessons have come through pain, really, really painful pain. And in my experience also, the greatest lessons have come from the most painful situations in my life. So that's all I got for you today, guys. I love you so much. Appreciate the feedback and support, really. I'm wishing nothing but peace and love to you and yours, and we will see you next time. Peace.